back everybody uh, this is uh, part three in the series so if you're behind you should totally catch up otherwise you just might be a confused person and I might just get on with it so last time I was talking about Andrew Price and his video on photorealism which maybe you have watched by now maybe you watched watched his long and really informative video uh, where he talks about uh, how to create photorealism and uh, it's a really interesting video Andrew Price is a really cool guy he's like one of the coolest guys uh, like aside from Darren Lyle and Sebastian uh, Sebastian Leg he is a really cool guy he's very professional I, I mean like he's he's professional where he needs to be and that's one reason I like uh, learning from him like he he's not like this uh, this plain boring teacher he's he's a uh, he, he's he's himself and he teaches you uh, uh, uh his learnings pretty much and he's not shy to say that he's experimented uh with something and and he he uh isn't uh, shy to uh experiment while he's trying to teach you something so you'll you both be learning something at the same time uh, you know in in consideration that uh He's actually already learned it, you know, because the timeline and things, unless you're a time traveler, you went back in time, uh, to like the, uh, unless you were like stalking him in his room in the time that he was making the video, that would actually be the only time you would be learning it, uh, together, stalking him while he's making his, uh, while he was recording it. But that would be weird. I, like, stalking's illegal. Don't do that. Um... But anyway, uh, but, uh, you know, if you can't get the real thing, like, I'm working with an otter. I don't have a pet otter. Uh, we, di we don't go to a zoo. We haven't been to a zoo in ages. So what's the next best thing? Well, uh, I think most of people would know the answers for that right now. The internet, of course, silly. But not just pictures. Uh, vi videos, too. Uh, especially if you're animating, uh, even, uh, professionals use, uh, video refs, they, uh, uh, examine how people move, and they basically imitate that, uh, it's good, uh, to, to use, uh, video, uh, references, uh, for anything, in, like, for me, I was able to find exactly what I needed when it came to otter, otter videos uh on youtube there aren't there weren't a whole lot surprisingly but there were uh i found what i needed uh you might not if you're not animating then you really just want to uh see the different angles that a person doesn't uh capture with a camera normally because you know like what kind of person takes random uh pictures uh, random angles of an otter, right? Well, there are people who take random pictures of pretty much everything, and then they upload them to websites. Uh, and I'm not saying that sarcastically. There are actually references of things you wouldn't normally take a picture of. And I know this because Andrew Price talks about them. Uh, he uh, promotes a website in one of his videos when he's talking about Crazy Bump. Uh-huh. And, uh, I think they're all for free. Uh, he's, he specifies it in his video. Uh, he even puts the link to the place in, the, in his description. So, yeah, I'll just link his video to the description as well. So, yeah, I'll be busy. So, these aren't, uh, the first teeth. Well, let me rephrase myself. These are the first teeth, pair of teeth that I make, but you know, like if you know anything about uh, 
otters, you know, that their teeth, they don't look like molars, or, uh, I think those are molars, I, I'm not a dentist, I don't, I don't remember what, uh, I, I know what scissors are, uh, I know what canine, canines are, like, the name, the, the teeth that literally anybody would know, uh, but anyway, basically, if you if you've seen what otter teeth look like, uh, you know that uh, what I'm doing right here in this video right now, it's wrong, and I acknowledge that. I was, I think I was just feeling sleepy at the time, and uh, I just didn't care because you notice, I'm not, I'm just duplicating all of those and resizing them. I wasn't even going back and uh, and. Uh, editing their shapes uh which you could tell i was probably definitely sleepy because i do delete the teeth uh eventually and i add new teeth that look way better so yeah at the moment i'm just trying to uh, fix the mouth using the grabbing tool which is extremely useful uh -huh. especially when you have the uh, the X mirror activated. Now, one important thing is uh, if you're using uh, <coughs> if you're using the mirror modifier, I should have told I mentioned this in the beginning, but oh well. Um, if you're using the mirror modifier uh, and you want basically the like uh, this one thing that even a caveman would figure out if you want something to look identical on one side uh, like an ear or well you don't want to do an ear in edit mode you, but like if you want to do say um, like whiskers well whiskers aren't exactly even but like teeth uh, anything that needs to be symmetric symmetrical uh, and you want to complete that in edit mode um, you want to keep keep the uh, mirror modifier activated through the entire time uh, for that very reason this makes it so much easier for the uh, next phases so just when you activate the mirror modifier you should also be aware of what modifiers, assuming that you have other modifiers in stack, are going to take effect because uh, the modifiers will act differently depending on how you um, apply them, as I demonstrated uh, by accident, though so that wasn't intended for demonstration, but you got to see it anyway. That's why, that's why I, uh, I film my mistakes so you can see what goes on. That's what I was talking about before, you know, and see like right here, I, uh, if you uh, make uh, certain edits in edit mode, move a play, a face out of place, it will cause like uh, things like you just saw, like that little glitch. Some things, uh, put simply, are better left untouched once you uh, have a... Uh, like say in edit mode, a lot of things are better left un unmoved, and any other uh, edits that you actually want to make, you should just do in sculpt mode uh, and do with the best you can. And then, and then, uh, you know, after you're done sculpting, you can just apply the uh, the. Uh, multi-resolution or subdivision surface. I don't think subdivision subdivision surface won't have the same effect as uh, as multi-res so you can still do a lot with uh, subdivision surface alone but uh, multi-resolution just makes things easier I guess like it uh, preserves detail so Oh, and another thing, uh, shape keys. Uh, a quick explanation on shape keys. Uh, 
first of all, Darren Lyle also has a, a tutorial on it. Like, he's got got an entire series uh, for this little game character. You should totally go watch it because I'm constantly referencing to his tutorials. Uh, shape keys are are just as, as simple uh, as anything else. Um, basically, uh, first you need a base shape key, which records the, uh, the mesh uh, uh, before you make any kinds of edits. And then once you make another shape key, any, ch any changes that you make to the mesh, say you add something or move something, you can actually change the influence of the, of the shape key that recorded that change. So if you created a shape key uh, with a if you created a shape key for the base, it it's a uh, it keeps the base. But if you make another shape key and say you move the jaw downward, or depending on you know, for example, if you open the jaw with the second shape key active in edit mode, you have to do this in edit mode um, because it will not it will not uh, work in pose mode because it, shape keys are made for edit mode. Uh, but if you go to object mode after you have done made your changes, you will see that your jaw uh, will move back into its original position because the the uh, second shape key it, its influence uh, has not been changed, and you can change that by going to the shape keys panel, of course, where I'm going to assume you're at this entire time. And there will be like a little bar that that will appear, and it will only appear in object mode, uh, if I remember correctly. It might appear in post mode. Uh, you can also key shape key this value, and that that's just for anybody who knows a thing or two about animation. I will make a video uh, documenting uh, animation in the future. But that won't be for a while because, uh, reasons. Anyway, um, this, uh, the sh that's pretty much the basic idea of a shape key. Uh, you just move the slider, uh, and, uh, depending on what you, uh, had your model doing in the, when you manipulated it, uh, with the second shape key active, it'll do whatever your shape key will have influence now one thing you got to be careful i learned this uh uh like uh oh a couple of models ago i think i was working on this uh this savian as he was called which uh is kind is uh like a wolf with wings but when i called him a wolf my friend corrected me and said he was a Sevian. So, anyway, um, I was working on his jaw, and uh, when I uh, made a shape key, and I moved the jaw, and well, basically, what I did, like, I added a base shape key uh, at the just before I started working on his mouth and then when I uh, switch to edit mode I uh, I added a s well before I switched to edit mode I, I or it was either before or after I think you can add a shape key uh, either way and um, I was working on his jaw the entire time with that second shape key active and uh, I had spent like a, an hour working on his jaw and I made, uh, or an hour or two and I made like a fully, uh, working jaw with like, uh, a tongue, gums, and, uh, I went to, uh, back into object mode and, uh, in edit mode I closed his jaw. No. No, uh, I actually had his jaw opened in edit mode and... In object mode, I hadn't 
when when I had the first uh, shape key uh, active, uh, I hadn't even manipulated uh, the model's head or like cut vertices, ripped vertices to be precise. I hadn't ripped any edges to create a a jaw. And in edit mode, uh, I did all of that. And so when I went back into object mode, the mouth was closed, but it looked sealed like I hadn't even touched it yet. So I activated the, uh, well, I adjust the slider of the second shape key and I, I noticed it was, it wasn't moving normally, like the jaw wasn't opening like a normal jaw would and it was uh, like deforming over at the uh, at kind of like it, at the back of the jaw and I was like what so and I and then I decided to uh, clip in the camera like inside of the model like or the viewer not the camera and uh, one one easy just just like a quick tip one easy tool you could use uh, I think it's called the orbit camera. You press shift F and then you can use W A S D to orbit around sort of like like uh anybody who's familiar with W A S D it it works just like it does in a PC game, but for anybody who's not, uh W is forward, S is backwards, A and D is left and right. It's super simple. And you can, if you're using a mouse, which I highly recommend the usage of a mouse when using Blender, you can uh, uh, s use the scroll wheel to adjust the speed of of the uh, of the orbit. Basically, it it, it tells you uh, the different uh, shortcuts you can use for the uh, well, the different controls for the orbit. So I use that to. To clip into my model and see what was going on and when I was a just adjusting the uh, second shape key I noticed that uh, when the jaw would close uh, everything was disappearing and actually reverting back to the time before I had actually made any edits and this is very interesting because uh, it actually records everything as the jaw would open, the ever all of my work would just like it, it would come back, and when the when I uh, with the full influence of the shape key on, everything was there. There wasn't a detail missing. The only thing is that it looked kind of weird. The jaw still looked kind of weird uh, when it would move. And I thought that was very cool, and that totally opens up for transformation opportunities. I don't see, uh, like, I haven't seen anybody do, like, transformation animations, except for, like, this one guy, like, back in 2014. I saw uh, videos of his on YouTube where he was transforming these animals into weird uh kind of scary creatures like there was one he did i think of a doberman and then there was another one he did of a rat i can't remember who who he is i don't know where to find him i couldn't even tell you what the title of his video was i just randomly came across it if if, if you if you uh know who he is please do uh share a link to his channel or the name I would love to see it because that's probably how he does it unless he says otherwise I just know that that would be an effective way to do a transformation and probably easier all right so here I am getting into the uh, UV image editor I all I did was I selected the front face of that uh, cube that I subdivided and then I unwrapped it here I am creating an image texture remember to save those and if if you want to manipulate it you got well if you want to paint anything onto the image you need to select paint and if you want to manipulate uh, the face 
uh, or the vertice itself that you are going to basically unwrap this texture onto. You need to, in, in the UV ed editor, you can actually enter edit mode by pressing tab. It will enter edit mode in the, in the 3D view, but when you go to masked view, if you have that UV selected, you can manipulate it and and adjust uh, the position of your uh, of your texture, kind of. And, and that's extremely useful. I, I really recommend. Uh, I recommend just about everything except for the parts where I mess up. Now, see right here. If you noticed on the eyes, the uh, yeah, there's square. That's one useful thing about the uh, uh, manipulating the vertice right inside the uh, UV image editor. And uh, it didn't it didn't uh, subdivide the, the vertices that the texture was on for some reason. I don't remember why. Uh, I think you just have to have like a subdivision surface activated and then you go into edit mode and you see that. Now here, I just uh, made some craziness. Uh, all I did was uh, create some new UVs and I activated uh, X mirror just then and I just smoothed it out. That's, that's just the main thing about manipulating your model in edit mode after you have multi-resolution activated and have like sculpt data you can you can spend the effort to to change uh to to add extra you just no let me rephrase that you can spend the extra to the extra effort to fix any irregularities just sometimes you there are certain areas of the model that just don't deform properly and they kind of just um they they kind of stay that way and like there'll be a they could, there could even be a part of the model that you just can't touch regardless of what you do like have you ever uh, i'm sure some people might have uh i've i've gotten to the points where uh sometimes i've uh did an improper uh, deform in a specific area and uh, well I wouldn't say improper just an, an intent attempt to add something and the uh, that part of the mesh there was like a piece of it that would uh, that would like glitch inside to the model and uh, I could never touch it I just couldn't even with a very specific uh, camera angle or if I couldn't touch it, it was extremely difficult to touch. And you, and that's where, uh, where, uh, the, uh, orbit, the camera orbit might, uh, come in handy. Now, I did try hiding, hiding one glitch piece one time, but it, like, since it was part of a whole face or vertice, it actually hid that entire vertice you can't hide just a specific part of a face unless unless uh, like you set the right model that's probably the only way so yeah you can see by now how badly i messed up on this model this yeah this just doesn't look like an otter it looks kind of horrifying the funny thing, after this model, I actually wanted to create a a 3D uh, like horror themed uh, model. So it kind of it worked out for the best, I guess. No, I wouldn't say it worked out for the best. Just the idea, uh, coincidental. Uh huh. Uh. And uh, yeah, see. I had to clear the model for the, uh, not the model, clear the mask. Uh, I think I'm actually trying to figure out what's going on right now. Or, no, I'm apparently going to add something. Oh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the nails. Or the claws. 
That would be nails in this in this situation because those aren't paws. So this is the nails again are one of those things you need to add in edit mode before you you add multi resolution because I didn't even use these nails. I tried fixing it so badly. You can see that kind of looks horrifying. I mean, it would it would be very it would be kind of like useful for an accurate nail, but but it it wasn't useful at all. It was just annoying. I didn't use the nails at all. I I parent I don't even remember if I parented the nails to the model or not. Uh, I think I just ended up hiding them. I don't remember what the last thing I did with the nails or. I just remember I made them, spent all the time to create them, and did not use them. So, just remember that. That's why it's so important, and that's why I recorded it. So you can see why it's so important. So, this is just me going to try and uh, spend all the effort for the nails. And I'm going to like super speed it up because I spent way too much time on uh trying to get these nails to look good so be a beat all right so finally out of that drama and uh, now like i can't mention this enough you see how important it is to be very careful when you're working in 3d art mistakes can cost you a lot of time now here's the part that i got stuck like you could see the there was parts of the model being manipulated but it wasn't being manipi or maybe it was i just remember i was getting stuck i couldn't manipulate the model too well or at all at the time it just seemed like I couldn't couldn't do anything at all and so I did made a lot of a different attempts and like I said before the problem was uh, I hadn't I did not clear the mask on uh, uh, when I hid the model so uh, right here I'm actually uh, just uh, making him uh, bigger because I noticed how uh, scarily thin he looked and that makes a big difference because accuracy so yeah just going through there and uh, making making the fine idiots at fine proportional edits for the time being nothing to really elaborate on here uh, yeah I might actually speed this up so be a bee uh, we are actually getting really close to that 30 minute mark so I think I will just uh, kind of speed model, speed this up, uh, maybe, I don't know, I, I'm just going to end it, okay, uh, because like these videos are really long, and I don't know how many people are actually going to watch these, but hopefully many, because, you know, I say a lot of things that uh, are supposed to be helpful, so, yeah. So, I will just see you, well, you'll see me in part, in the next part, yeah. So, out. Too late.